In this tutorial, we're going to talk conceptually about shaders, and then we'll finish off by showing you some common OpenGL functions that you'll be using when you're working with shaders. So before we begin, it's important to have some understanding of computer graphics theory. First of all, we have the concept of a vertex, which is a point in 3D space, and therefore it's going to have three components, X, Y, and Z. At a slightly higher level, we have the concept of a triangle. Now a triangle is made of three vertices, or three points, and it also has a normal. Down here in the lower left image, you can actually see the normal, and realize that the normal is the line that's perpendicular to all three of these edges. It's also important to note that each vertex can have a normal, and that's actually what OpenGL is going to be using. Now, working at an even higher level, we have the concept of models, sometimes also called meshes. Almost all of the meshes that you see in computer games and graphical applications are usually made up of a series of triangles. Now, one thing to keep in mind, if you come from a modeling background and you've been using applications like Maya or 3D Studio Max, realize that OpenGL doesn't support quads. In other words, it doesn't support things with four or more vertices. Now, a little bit of a historical background, you have to understand that the hardware has changed. It used to be that the hardware was fixed and it really limited what we could do graphically. However, the hardware did change and now more of the graphics pipeline is open for us. Now, because the hardware changed, OpenGL changed with it. It used to be that we had really fixed ways that we would program. However, OpenGL has now moved to a shader-based programming concept. Now, you may have heard of shaders, you may have not, but realize that a shader is simply a program. Therefore, it has things like source code, which is a text file. In other words, you can open it up and read it. There's a couple different languages for shaders, like CG, which is cross-platform. There's Microsoft's HLSL, and the one that we're going to be working with, which is GLSL. And just as a note, the SL means shader language. Realize that GLSL is very C-like, so you're going to recognize a lot of the keywords that are in this language. Also realize, because it is a program, that it's also compiled. In this case, when we compile a program, we're going to get back an ID, which is just an int. All right, now there's two primary types of shaders. The first kind of shader is a vertex shader, and the primary responsibility of this shader is to change the position of a vertex. It can do this any number of ways, like translation, rotation, scaling, skewing, and so on. And even though it's not commonly done, a vertex shader can also determine the color of a vertex. The other kind of shader that we have is a fragment shader, which is also sometimes called a pixel shader. This kind of shader determines the final color of a pixel, and it does so using things like lighting and materials and normals and so on. Now we're not going to dive too deeply into any kind of shader code in this tutorial. However, it is important that you understand how shader programs are made. First of all, you'll compile a vertex shader and you get back an ID, and again an ID is just an int. You'll also compile a fragment shader and get back an ID. It's usually a good idea to check for compilation errors, even though that's not required. And then once you have an ID for a vertex shader and the fragment shader, you link those two shaders together to get a shader program. Now again, this is going to return you an ID, and this is really the ID that you want to hold on to. The general idea is that you're going to use that ID before you render any triangles to the screen, and realize that we can have any number of shaders, but we'll likely reuse shaders across several different models. Like I said previously, we're not going to dive too far into the code today, but I did want to show you an example of what these things look like. In the upper part of the screen, you can see a vertex shader, and it has a variable here called s underscore v position. And a little bit lower, you can see that we have void main, which is the entry point to this vertex shader. We also have some pretty familiar things like comments on the inside, and a lot of the syntax is going to be the same. Down below the line, we have a fragment shader, and it also has main as its entry point. And in this case, we're saying that no matter what, the final color of this pixel is going to be red, regardless of the lighting or any kind of materials that might have been applied. It's really not a very good shader. Now, as promised, we're going to look at some of the OpenGL functions that you're going to be calling when you're working with shaders. The ones that you see here are used to create and compile vertex and fragment shaders. So to begin with, we would call glCreateShader, passing it the type of shader that we wanted to create. When we do that, it's going to return us an ID, which again is just an int. So as an example, you could see right here we call glCreateShader, passing it this constant glVertexShader, in other words, we want to create a vertex shader, and it's going to return us back an ID. Typically right after that we call glShaderSource, and this is what binds the source code to the shader. Now realize that this step has to happen before a compilation. And then finally, the last thing that you would want to do for your vertex and fragment shaders is to compile them. And you do that by calling glCompileShader and then passing it the shader ID. 
Now that we've made a vertex and fragment shader, it's time to create a full shader program. So the first thing you'd want to do is to make a call to glCreateProgram. Realize that this call is going to return you an ID, and you need to keep it as long as you need the shader, typically the life of the program. After creating that ID, you'll want to make two calls to glAttach shader. We want to do this for both the vertex and the fragment shader. So the first time you call this function, you'll pass the program ID and the vertex shader ID, and the second time you call this, you'll pass it the program ID and the fragment shader ID. The last thing you'll do is to call glLinkProgram. This call links the vertex and fragment shaders together and actually makes the full shader program. Finally, to be able to use this shader program, you'll call glUseProgram and pass it the shader program ID. You'll typically call this right before drawing any triangles to the screen. So that's it. Hopefully you have a better idea about what vertex and fragment shaders are and how they're combined to make a shader program.